Here's a list of items and their masses, and they're going to be placed into this beaker of water from the least massive object to the most massive object. And the big question we're going to ask is, does mass affect whether an object sinks or floats? Again, here's our list of items and their masses, and let's see what happens. Here's the red rod, and this is the least massive object at 0.1 grams, and that object sinks. Next we have the red bead at 0.3 grams. At first it had an air bubble in it, so it had to be tapped out, and so it sinks. Next we have the purple tube, and it has a mass of 0.4 grams, and it floats. Here's the white marble with a mass of 1.8 grams, and that marble floats. Next up is the peach marble with a mass of 2.1 grams, and it sinks. Here we have the green marble with a mass of 2.6 grams, and the green marble sinks. Next is the purple marble with a mass of 2.3 grams. We kind of went out of order here, but it sinks. Clear marble has a mass of 2.5 grams, and it sinks as well. This is a black stopper with a hole in it with a mass of 5.9 grams, and it sinks. The rock has a mass of 12.1 grams, and it sinks quickly to the bottom. The yellow block has a mass of 12.4 grams, and it floats when placed into the water. The most massive object of all is the big rock with a mass of 1,680.2 grams. It's placed in the tank of water, and it floats. Now you might be asking, well it has holes in it, of course it floats. It has air bubbles in it. Well, you can put it under water and try to get as much air bubbles out as possible, twist it around, and no matter what you do, it floats. So here are the items and the results, and it seems like mass has no effect on whether an object sinks or floats in water. The red rod had the least mass, and it sinks when placed in the water, and the most massive object, the big rock, floats when placed in water. So what could attribute whether an object sinks or floats in water? So let's look at another property of matter called density. Density is the amount of mass in a given volume, or the amount of matter in a given space. So here are the densities of the items and it's hard to see if there's a pattern going on. So let's rearrange these objects according to their density instead of their masses. So let's start off with the items that have the lowest density on top and the items with the highest density down at the bottom and see if there's a pattern. Well now it becomes really apparent. It looks like the items that have a density of less than one float in water, and those items that have a density greater than one sink in water. It's really obvious by this arrangement of the data. And if we think about it, well what's the density of water? The density of water is actually one. So those items that are less dense in water float in water, and those items that have a higher density than water sink in water. So mass doesn't have anything to do with it, but density does. Let's take a look at what these objects are made out of, and you see that the items with the same density are made of the same material. So the purple tube, the white marble, and the yellow block all have a density of 0.91 grams per cubic centimeter, and that's because they're made of the same material, polyethylene. Items that are made of the same material, no matter what sample you have of that material, are going to have the same density. That's why you can identify a chemical based on density. Density is one of the properties of matter. And why did the most massive object, the big rock, float in water? Well, it's because it has a very low density, 0.8 grams per cubic centimeter. That material is pumice. Pumice is a volcanic igneous rock that is very low in density and therefore floats in water.